Hi you guys, welcome to another episode of the Virtual Art Studio. My name is Erin Chamberlain and I'm going to be your teaching artist for today. The Virtual Art Studio is where teaching artists create lessons in visual art, dance, music, and more that you can enjoy from anywhere. This is presented by the Acadiana Center for the Arts and you can find these videos on their YouTube channel. Today I'm going to read a story to you called We Are the Water Protectors. As an inspiration for a watercolor project called Watercolor Earth, we will learn wax resist, wet on wet, brush and salt techniques in watercolor to complete our design. Water is the first medicine Nakomas taught me. We come from water and it nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythms run through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that would destroy the land, spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they were told it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in a fight for its life. Okay, you guys, now that we've read the book, let's take a closer look at Michaela Goode's artwork before we begin our own. In this first work, the artist uses salt as a watercolor technique to create the galaxy effect of this water. We will be doing this later. In this work of the book, you see the use of a wet on wet technique where the artist wets the paper and then adds the color to let the water pull the color here and there in a very organic and flowing way, much like water. In this work of the book, you see at the bottom of the painting that the artist uses the wax resist watercolor technique. This is where the wax and the crayon resist the water, leaving whatever color is below the wax remaining. You can paint a new color over the wax and it won't cover the wax. We will use all of these elements in our earth painting. Okay, you guys, let's go over the materials that you're going to need for this project. First, we're going to start out with the paper. This is just regular old mixed media paper, but you can also use watercolor paper if you have it. You're going to need two sheets, one for the background and one for your earth. You're also going to need some watercolors. This is a watercolor set by Prang, but you can also get one um, from Crayola um, at Walmart, the dollar store and usually it comes with a paintbrush. Um, I have two paintbrushes here because I'm gonna use this one for the background and this one for my earth, but you, you can just use one. Um, you'll also need a crayon, a white crayon. This is gonna be for our wax resist, so it's important that it is white. Um, you'll also need a pair of scissors, a cup with some water. You'll need a couple of um, pieces of paper towel. This is regular old table salt. Then you'll need some tape or glue to tape up our earth onto our background. And then I have two pencils here. One is in case you have something that you can trace like this bucket for your earth. If you don't have something that you can trace and you have a piece of string, you can tie it to your pencil and I'm going to show you a technique on how we can make a circle using string and a pencil. And that's going to be all for this project. 
Okay, you guys, we're gonna get started with our project. Um, here is our first piece of paper, and we're gonna do the background space using the watercolor technique called wet on wet. So, first, before we start with the actual painting, you need to get your paints and drop a couple of drops of water into the colors that you plan to use. So I'm gonna dab a couple of drops of water in there. We're gonna use a purple, blue, green. For the background, we're just gonna be using purple and blue, maybe a little bit of red. I want to do some red too. Okay. So the wet on wet technique is where you wet your paper first and then you lay down the color that you want to use so it, the water uh, helps the paint spread. So a little section at a time, we're going to wet our paper pretty good. Now if you're using watercolor, it doesn't absorb up the um, water as quickly as multimedia paper does, so you kind of have to work just a little bit quicker. You see how that paint just spreads? We're doing a galaxy. So, leave some areas that are a little bit darker than others. Slowly spreading out from where we just were. Kind of working quickly. You see how often I go back to my paint? Um, oftentimes I see students um, and they just keep using their brush until there's no real paint left. Um, to get vibrant color, you kind of have to leave the color dark. So go back to your paint pretty often to activate it again. Make sure you go to the edge of your paper, too. So we're gonna have blue, purples. Like I said, I'm probably gonna do some red. So now I'm going, again, beyond where I just was. You'll see this paper kind of crinkle up, too. And that's also another difference between watercolor paper and multimedia paper. Um, it's no problem if this starts to um, do that. You can, once it's pretty dry, put it under something heavy like some books and it will flatten back out for you um, or you can totally do that after the project is done like the planet and um, your background all right getting closer to this edge now we're going to be using salt next and we kind of have to keep this part wet in order for the salt to work right. So I'm just going to kind of keep reactivating it here and there. And just let that paint flow. I sometimes do like little figure eights to kind of keep my strokes loose so that I don't end up with any area that's, you know, too um, rigid looking. I'm going to throw in a little bit of red. And I'm just going to kind of mix in with my purples. Go to that edge. I had to hold down my paper so it didn't move. For you, it's probably not going to matter as much. Okay. This is the part that I had started on earlier, so I'm going to kind of go back into it, make sure that it's good and wet. Okay. Make some areas a little bit darker. So 
sometimes I like to have my edge a little bit darker because it tends to lighten up and pull away from the edge a little bit. So I'm going to kind of go back in each of my corners. Very loose. All right. Now, still good and wet. We're gonna go ahead and sprinkle on our salt. And you can choose some areas where you put more somewhere you put less. You don't want to do big globs. They need to be spread out good. Now, you're not going to take see this effect quickly. You need to wait for your paper to dry to really see what this salt does. But what it does is pull up the moisture and creates these little white spaces. That's going to be really cool later on. So, set this piece aside and we're going to start on the earth. Okay, I'm going to show you guys four methods on how to make a circle. Um, some are a little bit harder than others, so try what you think uh, will work best for your students. So, if you found a bucket that you can trace, roughly do it in the middle of your paper, right? You're going to hold it down, go around. Now, of course, this has to be smaller than the paper that you just made, right? So that it fits in the background space. So that's one way. If you don't have something that you can trace, then you can use a pencil with a string tied to it. This one's a little bit harder to master. So if you don't have stuff to trace, then this might not be ideal for everybody. So you're going to hold your pencil straight and your string tight and you're going to pull it around. Now this is not a perfect science, right? It needs to stay tight the whole time as you're going around for it to work correct and move your finger out of the way and then you can fix that part if you need to. Okay, actually my son taught me another way that I'm going to show you. You've got your paper, pencil, make sure you have enough space because we're going to be spinning your paper. Hold your pencil along the outside of where you envision your earth to be. Spin from that same spot. This is also kind of tough because you have to make sure that your paper stays pivoted from that same spot. My son is nine. He taught me this technique. Not foolproof. See, I'm not quite perfect, but hey, that's a pretty good circle, right? You could totally fix that. The fourth way is go to old fashioned repetition. Get your pencil hovering over your paper until you get a good rhythm, and then lay it down. And it's okay for this to look rough too. Okay, and then refine it. Erase what you don't need. We're going to be cutting this out later. So um, those edges we're not going to see too much. However, um, the watercolor will kind of show a little bit of pencil. So make sure you do a good erasing job if you choose this method. Okay, now that we've got our earth drawn out, we're going to sketch in um, lightly some continents. You can do this free-handed with your students. They don't have to look like anything in particular. Or you can show a map on your 
Promethean board or smart board and show your students the actual earth and try to get a similar rendition to um, the continents, which is what I'm going to do. I found this picture on my phone and so I'm going to do just a quick, very light outline of where everything is ish, you know, it does not have to be perfect. sketched out. Now we're going to do the wax resist technique. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And in Michaela Good's drawings, she had what looked like plant life that was kind of illuminated. It was lighter than all the other um, parts of her watercolor. And I think that was achieved with her using some kind of wax resist. So that is what we're going to do in the water space around our planet. You can also do stuff inside of the continents if you choose, um, but that's if you have extended time. So I'm just going to do little things around the earth here that are related to the earth, right? She talked about plants, trees, animals. So let your students choose what it is they want to draw in this section of the water. The trick is you're not going to really be able to see exactly what it is you're drawing, right? You kind of get a small, you see a little bit of the wax, especially if you have good lighting in your classroom, um, then you will see it better. But just tell your students to be confident. I'm drawing leaves. You're really going to see this stuff pop later whenever we put watercolor over it. So make it fun and exciting for this part. Okay, and I'm going to start repeating some of my designs. Now that I kind of have a couple of designs already planned out, I'm just going to kind of repeat. Sometimes less is more, right? make sure that you're pressing really hard with your crayons. If you do it too lightly, you're not going to get enough wax for it to really do anything. I'm going to clean up my lines around my continents and then we will start with the watercolor. Because again, you're going to kind of see these a little bit. It depends on what colors you're using too. I'm going to be using um, green my continents and blue for the water. Maybe a little bit of purple, especially along that edge, kind of show a little bit of value change. So, here we go. We're fixing to reveal um, what we did with the wax resist. So this is probably the most exciting part for students to see. Um, this time, I want my colors to be a little bit darker. So, I'm not going to do the wet on wet. This is considered dry brush. However, how can it really be dry brush when it's watercolor, right? It's just we're not wetting the paper first. This is so that we get some really vibrant color. And look at that. It's resisting my color where I put that watercolor down. How cool is that? And it's perfectly acceptable to go outside of the lines when you're doing this of the planet because we're going to be cutting that. So no big deal if your students go outside. I like to outline stuff and then fill it in. However, if it starts to dry, then it kind of creates these little striations that aren't always that cute. So, do it quickly. <coughs> it's perfectly accept acceptable if you want to do the wet on wet technique here to get a little bit more of that 
you know, tie-dyed look. But I just wanted to show you another technique. And I like to have my continents with like a little bit of jagged edges, right? Because it's definitely not perfect. These So you want to lay the purple down kind of quickly around your edge. Again, it doesn't have to stay perfectly in the lines. <coughs> kind of blend it out just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to clean our brush and just use water, oops, clean water, to then pull it towards the inside. So that way you get rid of that line and you're just left with blended color. So turn your brush towards the inside of your planet, almost like gravity is pulling you towards the center, right? <laughs> there we go. Cool. Now we're done with um, the water. Let's move on to the planets. Now, um, you may want to let this dry a little bit so that your green and blue don't bleed together. Because if if it's really wet around the edge of the um, country that you're just about to paint, then they're going to bleed together. So the, I can see that it's drier here, and the way that you can tell is because the paper is more dull, and areas that's still wet are going to be a little bit shiny, right? So. This is ready for me to go ahead and apply my paint. Now again, I'm using the dry brush for I did not um, put water down first. So I might come in with my napkin and lay it over the top, which gives it a kind of cool texture as if um, it's a little bit of topography, right, with um, mountains and things like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, we are done with our earth. You want to wait for this to dry before you cut it out. We're going to check back in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut out our um, planet to get ready to paste up onto our background. I already started cutting just a little bit. Here's where you can, if um, students have really gone far outside of the earth and they need to redraw their circle, you can totally do that. 
So in a way, maybe it's good to stay in the line so that you can see your circle. But this doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of the fun of little kid artwork. And there you go. Here's our planet Earth using wax resist. Okay, you guys, this was the result. You can see a lot of that cool texture that the salt made when it dried. You'll have to put this over a trash can and rub your fingers across the salt to get it to come off of your paper um, so that your planet glues on better. Um, honestly, I'd suggest using glue over tape just because of the salt. If you want more contrast, you could go along the outside edge of your planet with Sharpie to make it um, pop even more. This is optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it um, just so you can see. So now it kind of pops out even more from our background. Now I'm going to glue everything up and then I always like to back my um, projects in a little bit of black paper. So I'm going to glue that up and show you guys what it looks like. Okay guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's watercolor lesson and learned a lot of cool new techniques and enjoyed the book, We Are the Water Protectors. Um, please come back next time and join us for another virtual art studio.